Hey, what's happening guys? What's going on YouTube? You guys have tuned into Rules for Rebels and in today's video we're going to be talking about a pizza shop owner who actually managed to get over on DoorDash and made money by buying his own pizzas and taking advantage of a pricing screw up made by DoorDash. DoorDash seemingly took over his Google My Business listing and began offering delivery, which is apparently a way of bullying restaurants uh, and a customer st uh, acquisition strategy of DoorDash. Now this story kind of illustrates why I personally avoid investing in tech startups like DoorDash and Uber because there's so much dumb money, so much dumb money being thrown around. Uh, this story is also interesting in that in the midst of this current coronavirus situation, DoorDash should be doing record numbers due to everyone having to order in and new restaurants flocking to del delivery apps, but the company still can't make money. DoorDash has been an interesting topic as of late. Chicago recently announced they'll be instituting a rule forcing delivery apps to itemize and show customers what they're being charged and what they're charging restaurants. One thing that I think is probably hurting DoorDash is many restaurants, or one thing that I think is probably hurting restaurants is that many restaurants even use DoorDash for pickup orders. A number of restaurants I frequent, rather than having their own in-house ordering app or taking phone orders, prefer to take them through the DoorDash app, thus being charged a fee by DoorDash. During the lockdown, I've tried to support a lot of small local businesses and mom and pop businesses by calling in my orders, and I've actually had kind of mixed results. Some seem to appreciate and encourage call in orders, while others seem annoyed and tell you to order off their app, DoorDash or Grubhub. Anyhow, with DoorDash being in the news as of late, as well as being a bigger part of society, I thought this story was interesting and thought you guys would enjoy it. The story comes originally from a content strategist by the name of Ron John Roy, who shared a story, this story in his newsletter, The Margins, about a buddy of his who owns a pizza shop. His buddy had noticed a number of customers complaining about their delivery, but this seemed odd as the shop didn't offer delivery. Upon digging into it, he discovered a delivery option appeared on his shop's Google My Business listing that was created by DoorDash. Now, I was a little surprised to hear about this as a business typically controls their own Google My Business listing. However, customers can make edits and it's not unheard of for a business to mess with competitors' listings. Apparently, however, this is a tactic used by DoorDash to acquire new customers, uh, those customers obviously being restaurants, not people ordering food. Uh, but here's where the story gets interesting. So DoorDash had mistakenly listed a pizza at his shop for $24 when the pizza actually cost $16. Being a casual stock trader, the pizza shop owner immediately recognized an arbitrage opportunity and jumped on it. If DoorDash paid him $24 per pizza, he could order pizzas himself all day long and pocket a nice $8 per pizza on top of whatever his normal profit margins were. They started off, he and a buddy started off ordering 10 pizzas and it worked. They made a quick $75 in pure profit. The pizza shop owner wondered if DoorDash would catch on, but this went on for weeks and they never caught on. He continued doing it and even began ordering raw dough, essentially getting DoorDash to pay for his inventory. DoorDash last, last year lost $450 million despite generating $900 million in revenue. I know some of you guys are Gary V fans. Gary V often talks about venture capitalists throwing stupid money at any kid in a hoodie who can code, and this is a great example of that. You have people with piles of money to burn creating an incredibly inefficient money-losing business model. Uh, which is used to subsidize unsustainable business models and cu unsustainable customer expectations. The same thing goes on with Uber subsidizing each Uber ride to the tune of something like $9 on average. Whether we're talking about ride share companies or meal de delivery companies, rather than being forced to turn a profit and if they fail, uh, being forced to test, fail again and evolve, they have a never ending pile of money allowing their businesses to evolve artificially and incorrectly. According to a first quarter report this year, Grubhub has already lost another $33.4 million in the last three months, and that's during a lockdown when the business should th theoretically be thriving and doing better than ever. Anyhow, guys, thought this, was a, thought this was an interesting story. Wanted to share it with you guys. If you enjoyed today's video, please do me a favor. Go ahead and hit that thumbs up button down below. Uh, if you're not subscribed to the channel, hit that thumbs up button or hit that subscribe button down below. And until next time, this is Rules for Rebels signing out.